fun day just keeps continuing. So settle in so Mr. Albertini can share with you. Get the ambiance. Yeah, I know. This is perfect. It doesn't get any better. Um, so do we have everybody? We are all set. So first, Ms. Darby, I want to thank you for inviting me today to your You're author's welcome. tea. It was fantastic. I am so impressed with the writers that you have in your class. All Good of job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I learned more about wolves, moose, elephants, red pandas, chickens, bats, um, bats than I, uh, some amazing facts that I had no idea about. So great job. Uh, Mrs. Darby's class researching and writing about animals. So this morning I have a story about an animal. And um, yeah, but this is my story about the bullfrog. So I want to set. I want to set the. I want to tell you about the setting. You know, so I'll I'll put it all together so you get a, a full sense of the day, who I was with and um, the environment that I was going out into. So this was, uh, it was the end of June um, that this story takes place. It takes place in Derby Line, Vermont, right behind my house. Behind my house, there are several little ecosystems and, uh, and a lot of woods, fields, uh, marshland. So on one side, there is a stand of pine trees. Um, and in the middle, there was a big field, uh, and on the, uh, right off the field was a small pond and a marsh, and then a whole uh, stand of hardwood trees, maples, um, some birches, oak. And so I spent just about all my time, rain, sleet, snow, shine, really exploring, exploring in my backyard. That's what I did for fun. And at the end of, of June, beginning of July, something really special happened near my house. This is when the butterflies were coming. And I got really excited this time of year because I loved, I thought of myself as a naturalist and an explorer, and I love to try to catch butterflies. So, and my sister Gina did it as well. Has anybody in here ever seen Indiana Jones? Okay, so I had an Indiana Jones hat that I wore whenever I went exploring, and uh, I loved to wear it in the summertime when I was going to catch butterflies. So, this was the end of June, and my sister Gina and I had, do you, everybody remember Gina? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, Gina. Fun, fun. We called her Fun Gina. Um, so, we had made a plan that we were going to get up on Saturday morning and we were going to go searching for butterflies. My mother had bought us two big nets, and I had my Indiana Jones hat, and I also had a little um, a bag that I used that had holes in it and was safe for butterflies, that when I caught them, I would put them in the, the bag, and then I would spend some time, uh, when I got back to our barn, we had a big barn in the backyard, just looking at them and examining them, never like, not hurting them. Um, and then eventually I would let them go. So my sister Gina and I had made a plan that we were going to get up really early and we were going to start searching and hunting and exploring for butterflies. So we went to bed really early on a Friday night. I got up. I'm an early riser. I think I told you that. I get up really early in the morning, and that's when I do my best work and my best thinking. So about 5 o'clock in the morning, I was up, and I was ready to go. Got up, put my Indiana Jones hat on, got my, my butterfly bag, got my brand new net, butterfly net that my mother had bought us, and I ran upstairs, and I woke my sister Jean up. She popped out of bed. We had a hearty breakfast of homemade toast and cornflakes. We were powered up and we were ready to go. So, walked right out the door, right back to where the pond and the marsh uh, were. For some reason, on the edge of the field and where the marsh and the pond are is where the butterflies like to hang out. So, we were pretty excited. So, as you can see, I was walking down the, in our backyard with my Indiana Jones hat on my big butterfly net. My sister was behind me and she had her big butterfly net. She didn't have an Indiana Jones hat, but she had a baseball cap on. And we were walking. We knew right where to go. All of a sudden, we look up and there, there right in front of us are four or five butterflies just taking off. And we got really excited about that. 
And so we said, Gina looked at me and she goes, shh. So, so we started heading towards the, the butterflies. And, and I got really close to one. And it was a big, beautiful butterfly. And I took my net and I, I got really close. And I scooped at it. I missed it. Oh, Gina said, come on, John, you can do better than that. Oh, I said, yes, I can. So she was behind me, and she said, shh, stop. <laughs> she looked over there, and she saw another big, beautiful butterfly, and she took her net, and she scooped it, and she got it. I was like, oh, Gina, I got that butterfly. So she took the butterfly very carefully out of the net. She looked at it, she gave it to me, and I put it in the bag. And we kept searching and searching. And we saw a bunch more, and I missed two more. And all of a sudden, I hear something. It sounded like a fog horn. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped like this. I was like, what is that? And I looked at Gina. I said, Gina, what is that noise? And so we walked a little further, and we forgot all about the butterflies for a minute. We walked a little bit further, and all of a sudden we hear this. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was somebody in the bushes with a foghorn trying to trick us. Walked a little bit closer, and, we, and we, it was coming from the marsh area near the pond. So my sister Gina said, John, you gotta walk really soft and really quietly near the pond. So we started going really Looking around, you know, have you ever done that where you're just looking around, you can't see it, but you're, you know something's there, and, and we're walking, and we're keep getting closer and closer to the marsh, and I hear this thing, it's getting louder. <laughs> part of me was uh, excited, the other part was a little frightened. I've, I'd never heard this before, I'd never heard a sound like this. And it was coming, I could see that it was coming from this marshy area, and there was a little path that was going right to the pond, and so my sister down the, the walk, this path. I didn't hear anything, but I heard some, something kind of rustling. So we kept walking down that path, and all of a sudden, Gina, she smacks me on the back. She points in the bushes. And so, and she said, she said, I see something right there. So slowly, we both walked in together, this little marshy area, and all of a sudden I looked down, and there before my eyes is the biggest bullfrog you have ever seen in your life. Head was about this big. Let feet looked about this big. And my heart went, whoa, like, you know, like Woo, this is one big bullfrog. And I thought in my head, I have to. I have to catch this bullfrog. So my sister Gina, I said to Gina, I looked at her, I said, Gina, I'm going to take my net, and I'm going to try to trap the bullfrog. And she said, all right, John, good luck. So I tried to get as close as I could, and, and the, the bullfrog stopped making the sound. So I got pretty close to that bullfrog. I was really nervous, and I have my neck like this, and I see him, and I'm like, I'm really excited and I go to, to put my net up on him like this. <laughs> like the Yahoo, I say. And all of a sudden, before I could get the net down on him, that bullfrog goes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a super bullfrog. I'm telling you, that bullfrog jumped this high in the air. Boom! Right over to an, on top of a rock. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like it. That bullfrog was amazing. And I looked at my sister Gina and she said, John, you've got to capture the bullfrog. Now our intent was obviously not to hurt the bullfrog, but we wanted to keep it as a pet. That was what was in our mind. So she, Gina, Gina said, stop, John. Let me take over. So I said, okay. So my sister Gina, she sneaks up on the bullfrog. And I'm behind her and I'm walking behind her. And I, I step on a... a stick and it cracks and she turns to me. <laughs> so she gets really close to that old frog. And there it is and it's just perched up on this rock and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I've never seen a bullfrog this big. 
and I, I was mesmerized by it. I mean, it was it was huge. It was massive. It, I you've never seen anything like it. So Gina's getting closer and closer, and I'm getting more and more excited because I can see this living with me as a pet. And she gets closer and closer and closer and closer. She gets about from right, right here to there, and she she goes, okay, John. Whoa, shoot. She caps it. Net goes right over the bullfrog. She scoops it up, puts it under her arm, and she starts running for the house. Woo-hoo! She said, I got it! And I said, stop, Gina! Wait, wait! And she said, oh, okay, what? She said, John, we've got to go get um, a shoe box and put it in it. So we went to the barn. And in the barn, we found a shoe box that was about this big. So we decided before that we put it in the shoe box, we were going to name it. And I named it Big Bad Bob. <laughs> so we took Big Bad Bob and we put him in the shoebox. And we closed it and we poked holes in the top before we did it so it could breathe. And we were so excited. I looked at Gina and I said, oh, Gina, we're going to be able to keep Bob for a pet. Big Bad Bob is going to be our pet. And I said, we've got to go show Mom. So we took the, the shoebox and we marched off to the house. And, we were so happy. We were like, yes! We walked in the door and we said, Mom, we have a surprise for you. <laughs> and my mother was like, oh, wonderful, Gina and John. I want to see the surprise. Well, and we said, it's right here, right in the shoebox. And, oh, she said, oh, great. What do you have to show me? You're always finding something outside. So we brought the shoebox over to her, put it on the kitchen table, and she looks at me and she said, John, why don't you open it and show me? So I take the, the box and I open it up just a little way, and my mother looks in, she gets her head down to look in, because I didn't want it to jump out, right? So I opened it just enough so she could look in, and all of a sudden, a noise comes out of that box as I'm opening it, and goes, <laughs> My mother looks at it and she goes, ah! She said, what is in that box? And I said, Mom, it's a bullfrog. She said, get that out of the house now. And I said, but Mom, I, I love Bob. Bob is, is the best thing that's happened to us. We need a pet. We need another pet. We had pets all over the house. But we needed one more. And she said, no way, John. Get that thing out of here. She said, it's abnormally big. <laughs> and I said, Mom, it's just a big, huge bullfrog from Vermont. And she said, John, you can't have that in the house. No way. No way. And my sister Gina and I, we, we put it under our arms and we, we looked at her and we said, please, Mom, please, we'll take really good care of it. We'll feed it every day. I promise you we will. And she, she sat there and she thought for a minute and she said, okay. She said, okay, you can keep it. And we thought to ourselves, well, uh, we'll keep it in the fish tank. So we took old big Bob out, and Bob's this, you know, he's huge. Bob is huge. Head this big, body this big, feet this big. Grab it, take it out of the box, and we try to put it in our fish tank. Well, guess what? Too big, way too big for the fish tank. And we thought, well, what else? Can we get a box? So. We got a big box about this big, about this high. Good. We put it in it, put some, you know, some, tried to make it as close to a marsh as we could. And uh, we put it in the box and we sat there for a minute and looked at it and we're like, hey, everything's going to be okay. And uh, and we turned our back for one minute, guess what happened? Yeah. Jumped out, oing, 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 easily, right out of the box. Thank goodness we were able to catch it, we got it. We grabbed Big Bad Bob and we said, well, what are we going to do? Well, we had two bathrooms in the house. So what my sister Gina and I decided that we were going to do is we were going to keep it in the bathroom. So we put it in the bathtub and we put a little bit of water in there and we put some food in there and we were really excited. And uh, we went to bed that night, and it had its food, and everything was good. And so in the morning, uh, I get up really early, and I hear my sister Debbie. Remember Debbie? Yeah. yeah. So Debbie gets up, and I hear she's whistling to the bathroom. Oh. 
And I didn't think much of it. I forgot that Big Bad Bob was in the bathtub. Now you guys, you have to remember this. Bob is huge. Bob is the biggest bullfrog you've ever seen in your life. He's massive. And my sister Debbie, she is um, hmm, timid. A little, she's shy, a little shy. She's scared of things, stuff. You know, she doesn't really like reptiles, worms, bugs. Those are not her thing. So, uh, we'll see about that. Uh, so. She's going to the bathroom and she's going to take a, a, a she, she walks into the bathroom and I, um, I think she was going to take a shower. So she walks in and she's getting ready and closes the door. I didn't think anything of it. I, I forgot all about that. And then I hear the shower curtain open. And I hear this. And I hear this stomping, <laughs> running out of the door. Door flies open on the bathroom. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, what happened? Debbie's running down the stairs, down to the kitchen. <laughs> she said, she looked at me and she said, there's a big reptile in the bathroom! I know that. <laughs> you didn't get a good look at it. It was just massive. <laughs> so she runs downstairs, and I was like, oh my gosh, Bob, where's Big Bad Bob? Where's Bobarino? So I run upstairs, and I'm panicking because I'm like, what? I didn't know where he was. So I run upstairs as fast as I can. I go in the bathroom. I open the, the shower curtain. I look behind the toilet. I look under the sink. I look in the sink. I look out the window. I don't know why I did that, but I look out the window. No Bob. No Bob at all. I start to panic. Did you look in the toilet? I, I looked behind the toilet, but I, I guess I did look in the toilet, yes. But and I, no, Bob is nowhere to be found. And I'm panicking. I did look in the tub. And I'm panicking, where is Bob? Where is Bob? So I start hunting for them. For Bob. I'm looking all over the place, all over the place, and I, I hear some rustling around in my mother's bedroom. Oh. <laughs> I hear some rustling around in my mother's bedroom. And I panic. Oh my gosh, I said, I hope Bob is not in there. Well, I'm wa I, I hear some more rustling around. It was my mother. She must have been doing something in, in the bedroom, folding clothes, something, making the bed. So I just open the door a little ways. And I look at my mother, and she smiles at me. Hi, John. How are you? And I said, I'm great, I'm really doing well, doing superb, thank you, Mom. And then I, she turns around, she starts doing some more of her business, and I see her, the bed wasn't completely made, and, uh, and she said, I'm going to make the bed. So she goes over to the bed, she pulls back the covers, and there jumps Bob, whoop, party! My mother, Harriet, is her name. She goes, looks at me. <laughs> she said, get that frog out of here! <laughs> so, I had to grab Bob. I grabbed Bob. I was able to catch him. Now, things had gotten serious at the Albert Green House. We had, my sister Debbie um, was having a panic attack because she was afraid of the bullfrog. What about your other sister? Uh, Gina didn't care. She loved the bullfrog. Gina loved the bullfrog. My mother basically told me, it's me or the bullfrog. So one of us, we're, you know, either the bullfrog is going or she is, is really going or I'm going and the bullfrog is going. So, you know, I begged her. I said, no, mom, please, mom, no. Can we keep Bob? And she said, she looked at me and she said, John, that is one humongous bullfrog. She said, that it's not made to be in a house, it's made to be in the wild, it's made to live in the wild. And I thought about it for a minute and I said, you know what, I said, you're right, Mom. And so that afternoon, my sister Gina, my sister Debbie, my mother, and my dad, we walked out into the backyard and 
he went with us to let the frog go. So we took Big Bad Bob and we we brought him out to the backyard and we set him down and near the pond where he used to live and we we did put him down. And something amazing happened. I thought he would just jump away. I thought Big Bad Bob would go and just jump away, but guess what? He didn't. Bob, with his massive bullfrog body, turned and he looked right at us, just like this. Looked right up. Eyes about this big. Looked right up at us. And I, I can't prove this. I cannot prove this because I didn't have a camera, I didn't videotape it. But I could have sworn that that bullfrog smiled at me. His mouth went like this. He looked up at me with those big black eyes. Looked up and then he just took one bounce and I'm telling you, that bullfrog jumped from here. All the probably seven, eight, nine, ten feet. I could not believe it. And he was gone. Now the story's not over. I found something out. Probably about two months later. Has, have any of you ever been to Granby Zoo? Yes. Okay. Well, I didn't grow up too far from Granby Zoo. It's in, uh, it's right near Quatico. And I heard, and my dad owned a grocery store, and I was there, and I heard from some people that were from, were from that area that an African bullfrog had been lost at the Granby Zoo. Now, I can't prove it. I cannot prove it. But I think that Big Bad Bob was the African bullfrog that escaped from the Granby Zoo. So you know how I checked this out? I went to my encyclopedia and I looked up African bullfrog. And guess what I saw? Bob was in the picture. And that's how I that's where I that's how I made my conclusion that Big Bad Bob the bullfrog was the African bullfrog that escaped from the Granby Zoo. That's the end of the story. Any questions?